Lesson 6.4, proving a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The nice thing about this lesson is we've actually done a lot of this work already in 6.3. Now, if we're trying to prove something is a parallelogram, this is going to be the converse to 6.3. Converse just means it's kind of the opposite order. In 6.3, we were given a parallelogram, and then we knew lots of things about opposite sides and opposite angles. Now in 6.4, we're going to use what we know about those sides and angles to prove whether or not the shape is in fact a parallelogram. Over on the left, it talks about sides and diagonals. The statement reads, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if two pairs of opposite sides are congruent. If you have that marked, you know it's a parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. That's enough to justify that we have a parallelogram. The diagonals bisect each other. That's another one to show you have a parallelogram. You only need one of these to justify that answer. Notice they're all related to sides and diagonals. On the right hand side, it says a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if one angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. Notice the angle at the top is x. If it's supplementary to the right and to the bottom, that would ultimately mean that the opposite angles are also congruent to each other. That's one condition that makes a quadrilateral a parallelogram. The other condition related to angles is if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So notice the top left matches the bottom right, and then the bottom left matches with the top right. Again, you only need one of these statements to justify you have a parallelogram. In the examples below, there's going to be a fair amount of writing. We're going to do a lot of things like explain why something is true or not true. Please be ready to do that on your SAVAS assignment and on your quiz and test. It says in quadrilateral ABCD, AC is a diagonal, AB is congruent to CD, and AD is congruent to BC. It says is ABCD a parallelogram? And explain. By looking at the picture, notice on the left side and the right side, AB is congruent to B, or CD. And then top and bottom, BC is congruent to AD. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That's the first condition up above on the left. So we would state yes, and then just list that reason. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And that's all you need to justify that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. And then it says, try it, and then, oh gosh, it says question one again. Sorry, this should technically be question two. I have question three down below. That's strange. Let's fix that. Let's just make that a two. Thank you. <laughs> Explain why you cannot conclude that the next shape ABCD is a parallelogram. If we look at the markings, notice AB and CD are not congruent. It's consecutive sides being congruent, but not opposite. So to justify why it's not a kite, we can say opposites, well, I can't even spell it, hang on. Here we go. Opposite sides are not congruent. So it doesn't apply for that condition up above. This shape has consecutive sides. That's a different type of quadrilateral. If consecutive pairs are congruent, this shape is a kite. To round out the examples at the bottom, let's throw in a little algebra. For what values of R and S will quadrilateral WXYZ be a parallelogram? If we apply those definitions for sides and diagonals up at the top, WX has to be congruent to YZ, and XY has to be congruent to WZ. This is going to help us set up two separate equations. 
To get the R value, if Wx has to equal Yz, then 4R plus 7 has to be equal to 7R plus 1. And if we think about solving for R, let's get all the R terms on one side. I'm also going to move the 1 over to the other side by subtracting. 7 minus 1 is 6, and 7R minus 4R would equal 3R. To get R by itself, I'm going to divide each side by 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. That's the value of R that makes this a true statement. But we also, or that makes this a parallelogram, sorry. But we also need to figure out what S will equal. So S, the at XY is equal to WZ. This means S plus 5 has to equal 2S minus 2. Lots of 5s and 2s and S's, so hopefully you can tell them all apart, everybody. I'm going to subtract the S on the left and move it over to the right. I'm going to add 2 over to the left. On that left side, 5 plus 2 equals 7. And on the right, 2s, technically minus 1s, just gives us s left over. If s equals 7 and r equals 2, then quadrilateral wxyz will equal a parallelogram. Changing gears a little bit, let's take a look at angle measures inside the quadrilateral. For what values of a and b are R, or will make RSTU a parallelogram? Looking at the definitions for angles, we can either do consecutive angles or supplementary, or opposite angles are congruent. So angle S should be congruent to angle U. And that means 5A would be equal to 3A plus 14. To get A by itself, let's move the 3A over to the left, and that gives us 2A equals 14. Last but not least, to get A by itself, let's divide both sides by 2. To make angle S congruent to angle U, that lowercase a would have to equal 7. And then going in the other direction, angle R must match with angle T. That's another equation that we can create. Oops, I said T first and then R, but that's okay. If angle T is 3B plus 37, that expression would have to be equal to 4B plus 1. Make sure your B doesn't mix up with a 6, because that could look like pretty close to the same thing. We have 3B on the left, 4B on the right. I'm going to move that 3B over so that it matches up on the right-hand side, which means that I'm going to move that 1 over to the left, and now I do get 36. 37 minus 1 is 36. Try to make that 6. That looks weird. Oh, well, we'll take it. On the right, 4B minus 3B is just plain B. So B has to equal 36. And then angles R and T are congruent. When opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that's the work for angles. And in example 4, we're going to take a look at diagonals. Again, applying a little bit more algebra here, for what values of P and Q make ABCD a parallelogram? Well, if we look at segment AC from the bottom left to the top right, we know by definition that that diagonal is bisected. That would help us determine the value of Q. To get Q, oh, I don't like that, hang on, let's try that again. To get the Q value, we know that 3q plus 1 would have to equal 2q plus 3. The diagonal is bisected, so the left part has to equal the right part. And again, let's just kind of put our variable on the same side. Let's move that 2q over. And we'll also move the 1 to the right. On the left-hand side, 3q minus 2q is just q. Pretty easy to get that by itself. And then on the right-hand side, 3 minus 1 is 2. To have that uh, diagonal be bisected from A to C, Q would have to equal 2. 
And then if we take a look at the distance from B to D, that's another diagonal. By definition, it's bisected. And that'll help us determine the p-value. If the small part on the left has to equal the small part on the right, this would mean that 7p plus 1 is equal to 5p plus 3. Just like before, let's group the variable on the same side. I'm going to subtract 5p to the left, and then I'm going to move the 1 over to the right. On the left-hand side, 7p minus 5p equals 2p. And on the right, 3 minus 1, again, is 2. But now to get p by itself, we have to divide. And 2 divided by 2 equals 1. In order for BD to be a bisected diagonal, p would have to equal 1. Our final example is going to have us do a little bit of extra detective work in order to verify whether or not that we can get a parallelogram. It says, is PQRS a parallelogram? Explain. Looking at the picture, notice we have QP is equal to RS. We're partway there. QP is congruent to RS. But remember, the stipulation for side lengths was that one pair has to be both parallel and congruent. So this is just congruent. And then we have angle Q and angle R. Well, if we add them together, the measure of angle Q plus the measure of angle R, that's 48 plus 132, that equals 180, which means they are supplementary. And if those two angles are supplementary and they're same side interior angles, that means that QP is also parallel to RS. If same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So then we can mark that arrow on the picture as well and that's enough to justify that it's a parallelogram. So yes, it is a parallelogram. All right, last but not least, can you kind of justify the same idea? Is EFGH a parallelogram and explain? Notice we have FG on the top and EH on the bottom, so we have that they're congruent to each other. FG is congruent to EH. On the left side, I've got 29 and 151. So the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F equals 29 plus 151, and that is in fact 180 again, which makes EH also parallel to FG because of the same side interior angle rule. So if they're parallel, then yes, once again, it is a parallelogram. And those are your notes for 6.4. I hope that you found them to be quite familiar to what we talked about in Lesson 6-3.